What a sad tragedy that has fallen our nations. The statistics that keeps increasing hourly and the numbers are heartbreaking and concerning. It's almost like it's written in one out of three girls' destiny that they will be raped. Not forgetting the boys who are also victims but in silence because society and patriarchy has deprived them the right to express and deal with their emotions. And so I became part of the statistics. I used to visit my grandmother all the time as they had a good relationship with my mother even after her divorce with my father. Their relationship got broken and unfortunately it was never mended till today. I can imagine how hurt my mother was and how she had to deal with this situation. I was just a baby but I could already reason and knew what was wrong and right where I should or should not be touched. How I loved my cousin and trusted him. He had the song he used to sing for me every time. He would play with me and my other cousins. We would tickle and laugh. But one day the very song became a trap and I fell for it. He told my grandmother he was taking me home as my mother had asked him. Little did my grandmother know it was a lie and I mean why would she think badly of her grandchild. He carried me on his back as always and started singing as we took our way and the way led straight to the bush under the tree next to the railway. And so I was raped by my elder cousin just like that. He was courageous enough to take me back home to my mom. Shortly after that, I remember my mom preparing me to bath and she noticed I was not okay as I stood on the bed undressed. She asked me what was wrong and I told her what my cousin had done. She didn't waste any time. From the police station, we went straight to my grand's house with the police after the doctor had confirmed that I was indeed raped. You will be surprised or rather disappointed to know that my cousin was never arrested and I still don't know the reason why. I believe this was the reason my mom decided to move to my melody. Four years later, I was raped again by a man I considered to be my uncle. He was my mom's friend and used to help me a lot. Mom's mistakes was to, when mom's mistake was to leave me alone with him in the house to go to Mamkulu and so he took the opportunity. He held me down and helped himself and threatened that he would stop he would stop helping my mom if I spoke. This was after my aunt had told my father I was pregnant. I had because I had rushed all my privates and my teacher wrote a letter to the clinic this really killed me. I had not even seen my first period, yet my father believed it without proof and didn't spare me the beating. This was from early in the morning till I could see my friends come back from school. And another event which I have never even told anyone about, a friend that I trusted that I consider to be a brother. Yes, due to our bad habits and bad um, decisions, we decided to drink. We drank and drank and drank and eventually all of us were wasted. And so um, he was out. He couldn't walk. He couldn't, or rather maybe he was pretending. And then I let him sleep at my place. Little did I know that Early in the morning, he would force himself on me. This was very hard. I didn't, I felt so helpless. I didn't know how to, I, I felt so helpless. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't even know how I would even begin to talk about it because I had let him in willingly in my house. 
that he did rape me. I like to always listen to people talk about their childhood. Or if I may say their innocent childhood. And then I would close my eyes and picture that my, as my own memory. While as a child you'd always be thinking about ice cream, games, fun and go to sleep peacefully. I was always blaming myself, questioning why I was born. I developed suicide thoughts, felt like running away. I played happy when around people but cried whenever I was alone. I grew up to be insecure. I had no confidence and self isolated. I didn't receive any counseling or had any support and I remember how my brother would sometimes tease me and say he would call my cousin to sort me out. I had to deal with this by myself and it was hard adding on everything else. Hovering everything in my heart was the only option for me and resentment crept in. At some point I hated, I hated being a girl and so I played with boys and I was violent, I acted like them so as to protect myself I thought. This might not change anything but for me it could have to have, to have a friend, to have a family, to have someone, to have a sister hold my hand and tell me that they could never they can never understand my pain for they have never been through my trauma they never know what to say or how to say it but it is not an excuse they should they will try their best to find ways to support me help me understand that it was never my fault when i talk about how i feel that they will be patiently listening so that I may be able to let all my emotions out. But unfortunately, this never happens. But one thing that I've learned is that there is power and healing in storytelling. And today, as I tell my story, there is, you know, so much emotions. But more than anything, there is the courage that motivates me to tell my story because I have spoken about it over and over and over again. And with my story, I have managed to help so many women, many young women who have been through the same to know that it was not our fault. It was not our fault. And that... We can overcome this. It's a scar that will always be there. But it's a wound that will not be painful anymore.